Hello everybody, welcome back to the vlog. I can't believe how hot I am right now, even though I'm in London. The weather is insane, like it's beautiful. I feel like spring, summer has finally arrived. Now, if you watch the vlogs consistently, you will be thinking, Frau, why are you in London? You're meant to be in Dubai during this vlog. And it's true, I am. This vlog should be a Dubai vlog. And I did vlog that trip, but I'm gonna be honest with you. That video isn't ready to go live yet because I partnered with a brand in it and it can't go live. So that's just me being honest. It will come, probably next week. But in the meantime, I didn't want to miss another upload because I try and like upload consistently. I mean, you know, sometimes it's a bit sporadic, but I try and upload every Sunday or Monday. And I missed last Sunday because I was away and I'm just not prepared to miss another week. So I only got home the early hours of this morning, but I've turned my vlog camera on and we're gonna have a vlog in London, which is my favorite kind of vlogs, back at home, a big catch up. And I'm just gonna take you around with me for the weekend because I've missed you guys and I'm not prepared to miss another vlog. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm actually all dressed and all ready because I'm about to go out and go and shoot some content. As I've said, the weather is stunning and I have had nearly a month off of work. So even though it is a weekend and I've only just got back, your girl needs to go back to work. So I'm going out this morning. I have got a lot to do. My boyfriend is going to help me. Bless him. He's a good egg. I also, in this vlog, wanted just to catch up with you about loads of stuff, like moving house, buying a house. I feel like we haven't spoken about all these things in so long, and I just want to tell you about what's been going on. And I think today, I'll tell you why when we're in the car, but I'm pretty sure today we are going to be going on a long drive, and so I feel like during the long drive, I'm going to do a come and drive with me, and we can talk about everything there. So, it's good to be back. I've missed you all very much. And let's have a fun vlog in London. We've just arrived where I'm going to shoot some photos. Look how green the trees are. Can you see? When I left London, the trees were not bare, but pretty bare. And now they're all green. Love it when the trees are green. I know that's a really weird thing to notice, but seriously, it makes me so happy. So this is where we are. Do you know, I always used to shoot content around here, but I haven't actually shot here in ages. These houses are such a joke, they're amazing. We are on outfit number three now, and well, I'm just getting changed out for outfit number two. Everything's going quite well. Guys, my Levi's, which I've had for three years, have never been so tight on my thighs. Those, um, that month long holiday, really is showing on my legs and my belly right now. But anyway, it was all worth it, it was all fun and games. Um, but yeah, this is the glamorous life you guys know when I shoot content. This is where I get changed in my car. She's just so glam, but anyway, I need her up because Reese is waiting for me. And <laughs> truth is, he's actually really good for helping me, but he doesn't enjoy it. Shoot all done. It actually went very well. Um, and it didn't take too long at all. And now I'm currently following my boyfriend because he is about to sell his car. We've got to drive all the way to Essex. So I'm following him because I don't know where I'm going. I have a tuna cardo. And I also have on hand a green juice. Just a top tip, right? Joe in the juice, green juice, so healthy. I think it's celery, kale, spinach. If you add apple, it tastes so good, but it's still healthy. And then I got my favorite, tuna cardo, extra crispy. I actually haven't had one of these in two weeks, which I actually think is the longest I've ever gone without one in the last three years. I don't know what they put in these things, but they are so addictive and just so good. So Reese and I are about to pull over and we're actually gonna eat these together on the side of the road. How romantic is that? And then I'll see you when we're back in the car. Update, I did not vlog the entire journey. The whole like car vlog was going to be great, but it wasn't great because my sat nav wouldn't connect to my car and I spent the whole time concentrating at the road signs and looking where I was going and I was really stressed out. And um, we're actually now in central London and we are going to go to Knack to just chance our luck if they've got a table probably not i'm gonna have to slide down because my camera keeps moving um probably not because it's always really popular there and it's a saturday and london seems to be the one of the busiest i've ever seen it's so busy i haven't bought any makeup with me and after shooting that content i feel like i could really do with touching up my face but i don't have anything other than this dual lip gloss which i'd like to say how weirdly do I just put that on? But I'd like to say these Dior lip glosses are so good. It's in the shade 038, but it's almost like a mix of a gloss and a lipstick at the same time. So it's really like nice coverage, but they're glossy and they also plump your lips. Really rate them. I'd just like to say, I have not seen London this busy for years. Streets are wild. Like I'm gonna try and record Oxford Street if I can, because it's 
crazy. Look, I mean, you can't even really see, but it's wild. There's Selfridges. Yay! Okay, this is the restaurant we want to go to. I'm kind of hoping there's no one sat outside. I don't think they sat, mm, yeah, there's a hundred people sat outside, okay. It was a no. They didn't have any tables. Well, they did. Well, they didn't. They were actually shut until 6 p.m. and it's currently 20 past five. Where has the day gone today? I have no idea. We're now sat outside Delfino's. Well, Reese has gone in to go and see if they have any tables. We love this place. It's in Mayfair. Such a good Italian. Like, if you're ever in Mayfair and you want Italian food, go Delfino's. It's so good. It looks like this. They're scaffolding up at the moment down this whole road, but yeah, that's what it looks like. This place over the road looks really nice as well. I don't know what it is. I feel like that's new. Main course, we have, <clears throat> I'm choking on the pizza. We have corn pasta and a Marbury's pizza. If we hadn't already eaten enough Italian over the last month. I just stubbed my toe and isn't stubbing your toe one of the most painful things you can do? It was just, honestly, just, oh my, I can't even explain the pain. That is just horrible. Anyway, our food was lovely, wasn't it, darling? Do you know what? I don't even know what we've done today. I kind of was thinking I was going to start this vlog and have like a really good day with you all, but Honestly, how long did it take us to drive to Essex? Very, very long. No, seriously, how long was it? Like two hours? It was, wasn't it? It was two hours to get to Essex. And then coming back wasn't so bad, but that was like another hour. Like, honestly, we've just spent the whole day in the car. I'm just unboxing this um, thing I bought from Amazon. We bought it one time, which it looks like this. And it's a coffee pod dispenser, but I bought the wrong one. So I had to reorder one and I'm hoping this one fits because I didn't realise that my Nespresso coffee pods for my new coffee machine that I actually um, got out of the box yesterday, um, yeah, didn't fit the other one that I had. I should have checked the dimensions of this thing. Like, look at the size of this compared to the size of my head. Do we think this is actually going to look a bit like a monster? I feel like it is a little bit too big. Let's fill it up and just see how bad it looks. Oh, and it doesn't even fit like a tube. By the way, this is the Nespresso um, Starbucks Reserve. So this is in collaboration with Starbucks. So you can make your own coffees at home. And then this, um, would you call it flavour, is golden caramel. I haven't been able to drink caffeine for such a long time. However, I can drink quite a milky coffee early in the morning. Can't do it any time after the morning, otherwise I won't sleep. And I'm actually okay. So I decided to get myself a coffee machine because I do really miss having coffee and these pods in particular that look like this are decaffeinated. So in the evenings and things like that, this is really annoying me that these keep falling out, I can have a decaf coffee and oh my goodness, why is it just falling out so easily? Look how pretty these are, like a pearly pink and inside these I've never heard of this before but it says with vitamin B12 to support the normal function of the immune system. Funny enough, I, well actually haven't taken them in ages, but I always used to take B12 vitamins because I got told once that they were good for you. Um, haven't taken them in ages, but I should probably do that again because yeah, I've heard they are very good for you. I am beyond thrilled with how that looks. I should have filmed that for TikTok because I feel like that's the kind of thing you see people film on TikTok. If any of you want to come around my house for a coffee, you're more than welcome. I've got enough coffee here to hydrate you all. Good morning, everybody. I feel like these clips look so ridiculous in my hair, but it just keeps my hair out my face and I'm about to do my makeup. I am sorry I left you last night though. But I, do you know what, I didn't even really do a lot yesterday. We spent most of the day in the car driving to Essex. And then last night we just sat on the sofa. We watched some episodes that we've missed of Power. Well, it's like the new series on From Power. I think it's called The Power Book, which I actually really quite enjoy. I loved Power as a series and I'm very much enjoying this as well. However, we fell asleep and then woke up on the sofa at 2 a.m. and went to bed. And that was it. That's why I didn't vlog because that was all we did. Anyway, I'm now just getting ready because today we're going for a roast dinner, which I'm so excited about because roast is my favorite like an english roast dinner it's my favorite thing to eat in the whole entire world although i do love a pie like a chicken pie and i don't eat much chicken i do love a chicken pie but like with all the trimmings like gravy roast potatoes crispy ones 
I just feel like that food, you just can't beat it. And because we've been away for so long, we haven't had a roast in what feels like forever. So I'm very excited to go for a roast dinner today. But as I was getting ready, I thought we could have a little chat and catch up about what's been going on in my life over the last few months when it comes to buying a house. Because this is a subject I feel like I've been speaking about for a very long, long time. And I feel like if you watch my vlogs, a lot of you have been kind of following this journey, which is a very long one. And it is still continuing to be very long. But I just thought I'd just bring you guys up to speed of what has been going on in that situation. So, are you ready for a little bit of a story time? I hope you all are. So, as many of you probably already know, I currently live in London. I'm not from London though, I am from a place on the southeast coast. It's a very quiet seaside town, which when I was a child, I would, I actually really enjoyed it as a child. But as I was growing up as a teenager, I would honestly curse my mum and dad and be like, why did you live somewhere so boring and so far away from anything fun? But looking back and now as an older person, it is the most picturesque, safe, beautiful place to live. And if it wasn't so far away from kind of London and everything else, I would move back there because it is, it's just such a great place. And now as an adult, I realize that, but as a teenager, and even in my early 20s, and even when I moved to London, I, I never saw that side of it. I always just thought it was just annoyingly far away. Anyway, so that's where I'm from. I moved to London around two and a half years ago, and that's where I've been living ever since. And the reason I moved to London was, number one, it was my dream, and I wanted to go live my big city life. Number two is my job had changed and it kind of sort of meant that being in London would be better for work. And number three, I was young, single, wild and free and I just thought London would be a better place for me. So I actually tried to move originally before COVID and so it was about the February, like just say January, February time of 2020, then COVID hit and I was then stuck at home at my parents which once again, at the time, I thought it was the worst thing ever. But looking back, it was the best thing that could have possibly happened. And so during that period of COVID and everything was very uncertain, I thought the sensible thing to do would be to buy a house in Kent. Sorry if you've heard the story already, guys, but I just feel like I needed to quickly say this so we kind of know where we're at in life. So I went from thinking I was going to move to London before COVID to about the June after, well, COVID was still happening because it went on for a long time, as we all know. But so let's say like COVID happened in like the March, we're now the June. And I put an offer in on a house near my parents house it got accepted and I went through the whole mortgage process that went on literally until Christmas Eve so December I tried to get a mortgage the entire time I'd gone with different brokers I'd gone with different lenders and cut a long story short I wasn't able to get a mortgage and then I was in a position where I kind of had three options one was stay living at my parents one was rent around near my parents if I didn't want to live with them anymore and I was kind of getting to an age where I felt like I, I wanted my space I wanted to move out or number three was move to London and rent there and I chose option number three. I moved to London and I came and rented here and I am so glad I did that. And I truly believe in life, everything happens for a reason. There was a reason I didn't get that house in Kent. It wasn't meant for me. And looking back, I'm so glad I didn't get it because if I did get it, I would never have moved to London. I'd never experienced the things I have. I'd have never met the people I have. And I just feel like living in London has changed my opinion on a lot of things and opened my eyes a lot to things in life. And I just, I'm so happy I did it. However, I'm now at this stage where I'm kind of ready to get out of London. Like, I do love London in some ways, but for example, yesterday even driving to Essex just reminds me of the things that I don't like about it. Like how busy it constantly is. The busyness, how long it takes to drive places. I've said that a number of times in my vlogs, but you know, you'll look at your sat nav and it'll be like four miles you need to drive and that'll take 45 minutes. Like. It's just insane. The busyness gets to me and that's kind of why now at the age I am, I look back at where my parents live, which is very quiet, tranquil. And I actually quite like that. And I think there's something in me that wants that again, not to that extent, but I definitely want more space. I want where I live to be more peaceful and quiet and I'm ready to move out of where I am. But another thing that's really changed is because I did move to London, it's opened my eyes up to other areas I could live. So before I really thought the only place I could live in the world is near my parents. <laughs> but now I know there's lots of other places, not just in London, but around the outskirts of London. So the area in which I want to buy a house is not where it used to be. It's kind of still kind of in the London area, but not in the busy part of London. So rewind now to last summer, which I can't believe is nearly a year ago. Like where has that last year gone? It's insane how quick time goes. 
but I started my house hunting again, but obviously in a different area. And the reason I could start looking is because I did all the things that the mortgage lenders and the brokers told me to do three years ago and I'm now in a much stronger position than I was three years ago so I'm able to start looking at houses. Now I did actually find a house last August, I fell in love with it, it was beautiful, it was done up to perfection, it was completely renovated and I told you guys about it because it was the first house I viewed, I absolutely loved it but it was kind of like the best house on not a bad street, but like it was the best house on the street. And I feel like when you're buying houses, you kind of want to try and buy the worst house on a good street. That can't always happen, but I just felt like this house truthfully was overpriced for what it was. It was kind of like buying a car that's top spec inside, but like the outside is like every other car of its type. That's exactly what this house was. The inside was phenomenal and then the outside and the location was like you know it was okay but I did put an offer in because I really really loved the house and I kind of thought wouldn't it be really lovely to move into somewhere that's already done and you don't have to do all the work to it but I kind of made an offer not too far off the asking price but it was kind of what I thought the house was worth however someone over offered by a hundred thousand pounds and that knocked me out of the way and I was so sad about it and you know, on right move, I am like someone that lives on right move. Like literally, I look at it every single second of the day, always just checking if there's anything else going on there. And I would look at it all the time because houses stay on there subject to contract until they're completely sold. So subject to contract is obviously they're still in sort of like the works with the solicitors, trying to get the mortgages approved, all the rest of those things. And it would always just say subject to contract. So kind of thinking you never know like one day I might have a little bit of hope now fast forward to February of this year and I really wanted to be out of my flat because I rent this flat and it costs an awful lot of money to live here and I really thought I would have found a house by February and I would be in a position where I was kind of ready to move into it however between August seeing the house that I really liked and February I never saw a single house on right move that I even wanted to go and view like it's been desperate times so I extended my lease on my flat here which isn't really the end of the world it's just to be honest with you a waste of money and I would just love to be in somewhere a little bit bigger a little bit more space but whatever it is what it is and something I love about this flat is it feels like home to me and you know it could be worse but literally two weeks after i extended my lease a house came on right move that did actually sell last october and i did try and get a view in on it but when i called up for a view in the house had already gone so it wasn't meant to be and that was that but in the february it had unexpectedly come back on the market and i got an email and we booked a view in for pretty much the next day my boyfriend came with me and this house unlike the other house was a complete renovation project. Someone had been living in it for 50 years. It needed everything due into it, but it had so much potential. And that's what I could see in it. And it was the worst house on a on a really good road. And I thought, this is it, this is, this is it. So I put in an offer and they accepted it. I couldn't believe it. But I also had massive anxiety because I've never even owned a house before, let alone one that needed so much work to the point that I had a builder's quote and they said to me that the work would take about a year. And let's face it, if they say it's going to take a year, it's going to take a year and a half or two years. So it wasn't, that kind of was making me very anxious. And I was thinking, this is going to be a big job, but it could be amazing. And I also felt very excited at the prospect of doing that. Something I've always loved is interior design. So I thought, oh, wouldn't it just be so amazing to kind of like, you know, do a place up. But I mean, if you're doing a full reno project, there's more than doing the place up there. Like you're ripping down walls, you're, it's, it's a big job. Like the roof needed to come off. It was being extended every inch of its life. And anyway, the house was at probate, which means the person, please quote me if I'm wrong, but the person who owned it had passed away. And I actually don't really know what probate is to be honest, but it's just some sort of legal paperwork thing that takes a long time. So whilst the house was at probate, I went through and did all of my mortgage applications and went all through those things and I got my mortgage approved fantastic couldn't believe it like that needed a celebration in itself and then as the lender went to go and view the house to value it they told me there was a problem with the insulation in the roof and in their words not mine the house was unmortgageable and I then went to another mortgage lender and cut a long story short I went to seven mortgage lenders and they all said with that roof insulation we will not mortgage the house and then I was in a position where 
I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who have bought houses, but do you know what? It's even the same with rental properties. You go, you see something, you set your heart on it. You imagine yourself living in it. You imagine where your sofa's going to be, where your TV's going to be, making a coffee in the morning. Not that I did that with the coffee in that house because the kitchen was horrific, but you know what I mean? You kind of envision it. You sell, you sell it to yourself and then stuff happens and it's like heartbreaking <laughs> so this was the situation i was in and i thought here we go again but this time for once it wasn't my fault anymore it was the house's fault and i had a couple of quotes on how much the work would be to kind of do and it wasn't a lot but that really wasn't the issue it was the fact that you couldn't get a mortgage given that and the reason why is it can affect the structure of the house and you know as you start pulling it apart you might realize that the whole frame of the house is rotten and therefore the house is worth nothing so it was just in the end it came to a situation where i just felt that it was too much of a risk to buy it and also i was looking at it thinking have i bitten off more than i can chew with this like i have no experience with renovating property i have no skills when it comes to doing anything like that nor do i mean my family members do in the sense that my brother and my dad are both electricians but that's as far as it goes so like it's not like we have like loads of tradesmen in the family that can help me do the build we don't so i was just thinking maybe this is just too much and that combined with what the mortgage lenders had said i decided to walk away from the house and that happened in april and i can't tell you how much stress that whole situation brought to me because i feel like when you're going through like something like that like buying a house whatever you kind of put so much of your energy into it it's so draining and then you kind of live in limbo in the meantime like you don't know what you're doing with your life you don't know where you're going what you're oh, it's just the worst but in the end, the day that I told the estate agents what the mortgage lenders had said and the fact that I wasn't going to take the house, I, even though I felt really guilty to them, because, you know, I felt like it had gone on for a long time and I'd already had one sale fall through, it also wasn't my fault. And you have to think of yourself in these situations because you're spending an awful lot of money on something that could, you know, potentially change your life. It's somewhere you're going to live. And do you know what? That day, I felt like the biggest weight had been lifted off my shoulders and it'd been kind of two months of hell <laughs> something that is so crazy though is the day that i put the offer in on the house that needed renovating so the house that i recently found in february i had a call from the house that i saw back in august Do you remember the one that i also put an offer in but i got outbidded by 100k that i loved that had been done up to perfection inside i got a call to say that that house had also come back on the market and was i still interested and they were willing to take the offer that I'd originally made. I mean, can you believe it? But I just put an offer in on the house that needed renovating. And I think what the house that needed renovating made me realize is I could make a house as beautiful inside as the one that was in not as good as location, but had a beautiful interior. Like all that was, was just someone with a really good eye for interior design and they just made the inside look spectacular and truth is along with the help of a great interior designer you could do that to your own house but make your own money on it if that makes sense because the house that was so beautifully done up they'd extended it to an inch of its life like they'd extended into the garage they'd extended into the garden they had every room was just finished to perfection i couldn't have made any money on that house unless it was through inflation and the way house prices are at the moment they're so high already that it probably would be a few years before you'd make any money or even see your own money back again and even though there is a side of me that just wants to buy a house like that because it would be so simple to move into the other side of me is like, no, you want to buy something you can kind of do a bit of a reno to. Not as big of a reno as the other one, but, you know, kind of modernise the inside or make it how you'd like it and add a little bit of value to it. And so I actually turned down the offer as well. So that's my update with that. And now we are in, what are we? We're late May and i have no update for you the last month i've just spent my entire time partying <laughs> and enjoying life i haven't really been thinking about buying a house or what i'm gonna do except for the last two days which now i've gone into complete panic mode because i kind of need to be out this flat by august if i'm not going to extend my lease again and in truth i really don't want to as i've mentioned already as much as i love this flat i just feel that it is a bit of a waste of money and i don't need to be here anymore like in this area and i just feel like i'm kind of ready to move and my partner and i are thinking we are potentially going to go and rent together until i find somewhere 
that I like enough to buy. I mean, in an ideal world, what would be really great is if I found a house in the next two days on Rightmove, there was no chain and I could move in next month. That would be fantastic. But I'm also a realist and understand that these things take time and chances are that's really not gonna happen. I have even toyed with the idea of giving up my lease here and moving back to my mum and dad's for a bit, but I don't know how my mum and dad would feel about that. I also don't know how my relationship would survive because I feel like that is a big strain, isn't it really? I mean, I'm unsure about that one. So I think really what's gonna happen is we are gonna go and rent somewhere else. Or I mean, I say this, I mean, chances are I'll end up staying here, won't I? I don't really know, but yeah. That's the house update. Just know that the day that I finally get a house, guys, is going to be like one of the happiest days of my life because it's been such a slog. <laughs> and it's something I've learned so much from it. I've learned patience, which I don't have very much of. And I've also learned that good things supposedly take a long time. I also just want to say that like buying a house is not all the be all and end all of anything. I feel like society makes us think that we must do these things and all the rest of it but I've said it before but there is really something to be said for renting and one thing that's so good about it is if there's anything that goes wrong which to be fair in this flight at the moment there's a lot and I don't actually do anything about it but if there is you can call someone it come and gets fixed and you don't even have to pay for it which is really great and I know that doesn't happen if you own the house another thing that's good about renting is the fact that when you want to move so like let's say for example I decide in August I want to go and move to I don't know Dubai or I want to go and move to the other side of London I hand in my notice and I leave there's no kind of need to sell the house there's no big chain there's no solicitors or anything like that it's really simple you get your stuff in your bag and you leave like that is a really positive thing to rent in after two and a half years of renting I'm just really looking forward to making somewhere my own kind of putting my stamp on somewhere and yeah just making somewhere my own home i'm so ready for it i feel like i've been ready for it though for like three years but as i've mentioned already in this i'm a true believer and i really am that everything happens for a reason and the reason it hasn't happened already is because it's just not been the right time and the houses that i thought i liked and like loved the house i put the offers in it was like something protecting me from getting them because they weren't right for me i mean i'm very like that i'm very into my crystals and stuff if you can't already tell but i think you have to think like that in life because otherwise it just kind of gets you down sometimes so that is my big update and if you followed along that entire story i thank you for listening because i feel like it was slightly confusing as well um but yeah like one day in the very near future we're speaking it into existence i'm gonna say guys I've got a house. I've got a house. It's happened. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Anyway, let's pick something to wear and I also really need to brush my hair. Okay, outfit of the day. It's going to be very simple. By the way, this is day two Dyson hair. How well has it held? I haven't actually Dysoned my hair in two weeks, well nearly three weeks because I didn't take my Dyson hair wrap to Dubai because it doesn't work when it's humid. I've said this so many times, but my Dyson air wrap doesn't hold my hair when it's like hot and humid. So I didn't even bother taking it with me and I've just been using a wand. But I Dysoned it yesterday and this is the result still today. Anyway, perfume today, I have to tell you about, maybe I'll wear this actually, switch it up, but this new perfume from Jo Malone, they sent it to me. I can't believe those two words, Jo Malone, and they sent it to me has been, that's more than three words, isn't it? But anyway, I can't believe that's in the same sentence. It looks like this, it's called Highland Heather Cologne, like this, and it smells so incredible. It kind of reminds me of Jo Malone, pomegranate noir which i feel like is a very famous fragrance from them it's kind of got that very like similar scent but it's like really rich but it's so lovely i wore it yesterday but today i'm gonna wear my favorite which i have been wearing all of the time just recently delina by perfumes de mali it's just so i can't even tell you how nice this is oh i just actually put that all over my bracelet which shouldn't have done so i've got on this white top which is from zara which is definitely accentuating my roles that i have got going on right now but don't worry guys these are gonna be gone give me a month and i'm gonna be in the gym and looking trim again but anyway you know this is the thing with bodies they change we put on weight we lose weight Got to embrace the changes and be happy that i'm healthy but seriously my belly right now is like pizza dough honestly where have my abs gone if i stand to the side like this slightly you can kind of i can kind of fake it but really anyway and then for my jacket i'm gonna wear my juicy london cropped leather jacket because even though the sun's out i don't really think it's gonna be that warm like sat in the shade then my jeans are my h&m ones and the reason i'm wearing the shoes in the room on the carpet my adidas sambas is because even though i've had them for ages never actually worn them 
because I don't know, I don't actually really love how they look on my feet, but I feel like with this outfit, they look okay. And then my bag, I'm just going to take my um, Chanel Mini, which is stuffed with loads of stuff from my trip. And as simple as this, and then sunglasses, I'm actually gonna use my Chanel ones, which I have been loving. I said this, I think, in another vlog, but they're the comfiest sunglasses I've ever owned and worn. And this is the look today. I mean, it's very original fair, isn't it, really? Definitely worn something like this a hundred times before. Do you know something I'd really like to get, although I'm on a spending ban? I'm not buying anything. I mean, she says this all the time, but I'm actually not gonna really buy anything until, well, for a long time. But I'd really love a, a belt, a black leather belt with silver hardware. Because all the belts that I have have gold hardware. And I feel like silver would look really nice. This outfit. Like, imagine the YSL one, silver. It'd look really nice, but I'm not buying anything. Look how pretty Clapham looks in the sunshine. And this is the pub we're going to. We've been many, many times before. <laughs> he asked if you went to go and get some straws. He did. Did you get any? Yeah, and a flashback. <laughs> Guys, I can't even tell you. So, Reese has got this obsession where he can't drink out of a glass, a public glass, without a straw, which is just like crazy. Anyway, they don't have any straws, so he went to Sainsbury's across the road to go and buy some straws. And we've got a bit of a fly issue, like there's flies out here. So we also bought some fly spray. <laughs> Should I, should I give them to them? <laughs> I'll keep them in the car for emergencies. Yeah, that is so funny. I'll take it you don't want one. Well, I've drank it now. I'm not like obsessed with drinking out of glasses like you. Problem. <laughs> I don't even know if we showed our food, you know. Well, this is my half eaten nut roast. And that's Reese's nearly all eaten chicken. <laughs> Reese has just gone, I know every word to this song. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, ready? <laughs> well, our roast dinner, I don't even know what to say about it guys, it was so bad. I hate like saying bad things about places because my parents own a restaurant, I was in that whole like, hospitality industry for like 10, 12 years and it's really hard game. However, there was barely anyone there. We've had amazing roast dinners at that pub before. And today it was, yeah, it was quiet. And the food tasted how a roast dinner does at 5 p.m. You know, like with pubs and stuff, they make the roast dinner most of the time, they make it at like, you know, 11 in the morning. So then come midday, it's fresh. So we ate at 12.30 and it was stale. Like the roast, it was just so rubbish. And I don't want to talk badly a bit because you know, shit happens and people have bad days, but it was really, really not great. But anyway, we're now in um, Crystal Palace. <laughs> so random, I mean like me taking to Crystal Palace, but um, we're here because, Reese, do you wanna get in the car and tell everyone why we're at Crystal Palace? We've come to get some jerk chicken. No, we haven't come to get jerk chicken. Why are we actually in Crystal Palace? Should I get because we're watching football? We're going to watch the football because re supports the palace, the palace, the palace. We've parked, well, he's parked in the tightest space ever, so the right now he's trying to concentrate. But yeah, we're not actually here because re supports palace. We're here because um, one of Reese's friends pray, plays for palace and it's like the last game of the season. So we've come to watch um, the football, which I actually really enjoy nowadays. Reese is an avid football um, supporter, loves a bit of football, played a lot in your lifetime, haven't you, Reese? And um, yeah, I never, my nan and my mum, I've got a family of like football lovers. Not my dad though, they're more rugby, but my mum they and my nan, they love football. And I've never been into it, but obviously since meeting Reese, we go to the odd game here and there. I actually quite enjoy it. We're the boys from South London. <laughs> <laughs> this is Reese's, well, one of his best mates. How cool is this? His artist painted this on the wall near the club. So sick. It's so detailed, it's so clever. These horses? I always love seeing them. Aww, horsey. <laughs> now one thing, by the way, 
look at these rolls on my belly right now. Anyway, one thing you should all know about me is one day you might get an Hermes unboxing, the next day you might get a fancy trip to Dubai, and then other times you might be in South London watching Crystal Palace play football. You know, you just never know what you're gonna get. Um, I actually enjoy watching the football. I think it's actually quite good. It's a good day out, nice and sunny. It was good vibes in there cheering with everyone and we met this lady which is the reason i have to talk to you about it then we met this lady her name was june she's actually in the program which she gave to me she was 90 years old she was sat behind us and i turned around she was on her own and i'm not joking i had tears in my eyes i actually do think i'm during my period and i feel very agitated at the moment you know and just i think it's that time it's coming and i honestly shed a tear because i thought she was on her own and she actually technically was but also wasn't this is june she's in the um program sorry the light is not good the sun is actually going down but look at her i'm hoping you can see this she was so lovely and so cute can you see her look and the reason she's in the program is because 47 years ago this was her at crystal palace and she's a palace supporter and they invited her for the last game of the season and she was sat behind us in half time i had to just speak to her and yeah we chatted it was just it was so nice anyway We've actually just been for dinner and um, we're just driving home. And I actually didn't realize, this is how boring we are, we are so boring, that it's actually bank holiday and everyone out was so dressed up and looked so glamorous. And I was thinking, God, everyone's so dressed up for a Sunday. Like, why is everyone so dressed up? And then I just said to Reese, it's obviously because, well, we just, I just remembered it was bank holiday and obviously everyone else is fun and we're just really boring. Everyone else is going on a fun night out and we're going home to, probably order a dessert on delivery. Also, I've just looked down and my trousers are unbuttoned because they are bursting out of these jeans. My belly is bursting out of these jeans. And I'm unsure if in that last bit of footage you can actually see that. If you can, sorry about that. If you can't, then you didn't need to know that bit of information. But um, yeah, I can't remember to refilm it and it is what it is. If you're not a person that has to unbutton your jeans after you've been out for dinner, we can't be friends. I just have to document this moment. I mean, I've just taken my makeup off, so I will excuse my face. But after saying we don't like going out in the car, Reese is now off on a night out and he's leaving me at home. And I'm gonna sit in my favorite place in the world, underneath my blanket, on my sofa. These plugs annoy me so much, I can't even tell you. And I've got Candy Kittens Cherry Flavor, my favorite, and I just recently Bought these from Sainsbury's, let me show you them. So they're Mr. Kipling and they are gooey brownie bites. They look like this and they are so nice guys. Originally I had them in the cupboard. Oh no, one's just fallen on the sofa. They're like this tiny little bite sized thing. Originally I had them in the cupboard, but I felt they'd be nicer if they were hard and in the fridge. So I put them in the fridge and I actually really like them. I have eaten nearly the entire pack. They aren't that good for you though. Look at this, they are, 71 calories per bite, which I feel like is quite a lot considering the size of it. They'd be really nice, hot, put them in the microwave, hot with some ice cream. Maybe I should do that. But my 17th diet, no, not diet, we're not gonna call it a diet, but my 17th healthy version of me starts again tomorrow, because tomorrow is Monday. Actually, no, it's a bank holiday, so maybe I might start Tuesday. I don't know, but something needs to happen because I'm so out of shape. Not even about the body image, you know what I mean? More than that, it's just, the inter I'm just so unhealthy right now. Like I need to be the best version of myself. And right now I'm absolutely not, but my skin looks great. Anyway, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit on this sofa. I'm gonna upload this vlog to my to my laptop and I'm gonna edit it. It is like 10 p.m. and it's a bank holiday and I should be out having fun, but not, this is my version of fun. So I'm gonna do that and hopefully maybe if I've got enough footage, maybe I could get this vlog up for you for tomorrow, which is bank holiday Monday. We could give it a go. I'm gonna give you all one clue where I went last night. This is your clue, guys. I went to go and watch Beyonce, Very, who is a brand that I work with and I love so much. Like they are such an amazing brand to work with. They so kindly, like I'm still not over it, they took me to go and watch Beyonce. It was just incredible. Like, honestly, look at my face. I, it was just so good. I'm not even, it was just amazing. I am, I want to say the biggest Beyonce fan, but that would be unfair to her, like, big fans, because she has very, very, very loyal fans out there. But I've been a Beyonce fan for so many years. I've been to the Sasha Fierce tour. I went to the On The Run tour. And then I went and saw her last night. 
insane. She is, in my opinion, the best performer of all time. Like, she always puts on a show. Her voice is unmatched. Like, her energy, the crowd's energy, it was just such a good night. I can't even explain to you. It was so good. Loved every second of it. The only thing is, I didn't know, I mean, this is why I'm not the biggest fan, obviously, but um, I didn't know some of her more recent songs. Like, I knew lots of them, like Cozy, um, Alien, Puffet, the ones that kind of went viral. But I don't know all of her songs from a new album, but she did quite a few old songs. Um, but even so, it was just such good vibes. And also her daughter, Blue Ivy, which can we just take a moment for the fact that she makes me feel old because her daughter is suddenly like a full-blown teenager. Well, she's actually not. She's I think she's 11. But she is just so grown up for her age. She came out, she danced with her mum. And when I'm saying dance, like, she was so smooth with it. She's got Jay-Z's kind of really cool vibe. And she smashed it. Like, the dance routine she did was so sick. In front of all... There was, like, something like 40,000 people. There's so 60,000 people there. A packed, packed stadium. And she just... She was just, like... Like, literally, her facials, everything. She was so sick. It was just amazing. She's a superstar in the making. But, I mean... I mean, she's already a superstar from that performance. But when you've got Beyonce as a mum and Jay-Z for a dad, I mean... You know, it helps a little bit, doesn't it? But, yeah, it was so good. Like, honestly, I, I'm just... I'm actually beaming about it. You know when you go watch a show and then you come out literally singing and dancing and I feel like that whole high is going to live with me for, like, the next couple of weeks because it was just so good. I've been watching back the videos that I took... Oh, it was so good. So if any of you are going, enjoy it. It was brilliant. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. But anyway, I just want to wrap this vlog up. I feel like I've spoken so much in this vlog. I planned to have it up last night, but truthfully, I edit my own videos. I film my own videos and it's so hard when I'm... Like, if you're editing 40 minutes worth of footage, which is probably how long this video is going to be, usually there's probably two hours worth of footage that I've whittled down to 40 minutes and then you have to watch it through like three times it's very time consuming and I'm not moaning I'm just saying this is the reason why it hasn't gone up when I said it was going because I, I physically haven't had the time but even though I got home at 1am last like in the morning I set my line for 6am I got this video edited and I'm hoping it's going to go up today which is Tuesday so as always thank you guys so much for watching I love you all very much. I have got another video going live. I think it's on Thursday and I've got another video going live on Sunday. So even though I've been very shit with the uploads, I promise you this week I'm going to be better. I love you all very much. Have a great week and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Love you guys. Bye.